Hello, welcome back to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquigums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Might and Magic Heroes 7. We're on episode 40 and we're about to start up the Sylvan campaign. Now, I started this in pre-release before I even started recording, guys. So I have the footage that starts this up. But we're going to set the campaign and everything and I'm going to add the footage later. Kind of just like throw it in there. It should be relatively seamless, but we're going to start the campaign up Lord on... Griffin, shall I continue my story? See, he says he's continuing. We're going to skip over this and then we're going to change the difficulty as well so if you want to take a look real quick there's a couple different difficulty settings here so the advanced difficulty settings here is players start with resources neutral strength neutral growth and ai economic strength and if we set it up to hard we'll take a peek and it looks like it just moved everything down by one so that being said i don't what does neutral growth mean do neutrals actually grow by degrees if we don't fight them? I thought they were always exactly down the same line. Anyway, we're going to try this. We're going to see how I do with the harder difficulty for the Sylvan. I may only play the Sylvan this way if I find it to be pretty difficult or I struggle with it. Or I may play the rest of the campaigns this way. I don't know. I think I might just try one in hard difficulty. Even if I beat it and it's still somewhat easy, I may still go back to normal. Just because I'm in... Well, I don't know. We'll see, guys. We'll see what I decide to do. Anyway, I will be back after all the videos are played, and we'll continue from there. I would tell you the story of an odyssey about a chosen leader who no one wanted and no one expected. I'm listening. Regardless of what I do next, there's something we cannot overlook. Seamus has the support of the Church of Light, and I do not. Many within the church are on our side, Duke Ivan. When the moment comes, they will be behind you. I certainly hope so, Marizel. And I appreciate your efforts to rally them to our cause. But what of Elra? So far, he has been silent. But maybe that's because he's fine with the idea of Seamus sitting on the throne. What can I hope to achieve if the dragons have already ordained our fates? No fate but what hand makes. The Orc Kente is right, my lord. The dragon's ways are mysterious, and it is often difficult to grasp the full extent of their actions. I was wondering what kind of advice I could offer you, my lord. But I seem to recall an elven tale that would fit the matter at hand. Rowena of Unicorn speaks highly of you, Lysir. I would hear your story. How many days did Wisloff drift with only hunger and thirst as companions? One day... He woke up lying on the sands of an unknown shore. Rather than cursing the dragons, he was grateful to be alive. Silana and Shalassa had shown mercy. Curious to see where fate had landed him, Wisloth set out to explore. Alright, it's time to set out to explore as Wisloth, the sea elf. Alright, we have two new quests, uh, the castaway and, well, of course, Wisloth must not be defeated. That's kind of a given in all of these. All right, he has an important role to play in future events. He must survive the island's ordeals. All right. And Wisloth finds himself shipwrecked on a mysterious island. He should explore his surroundings to determine where fate has taken him. Okay, so there you have it, folks. And we're going to, I guess, start branching out and seeing what we can find and see what we can accomplish here in the very first episode of the Sylvan Campaign. Pain, pain, pain. All right, it's fine, guys. Let's go here, and... Hmm. I'm not seeing a whole heck of a lot. Alright, I guess we end our turn. Not a whole ton of exploration has gone through yet. The and first creature we came across was a lone unicorn, grazing under the cool shadows of the trees. To Wisloth's surprise, the majestic animal offered to become his mount. Where there are tame unicorns, there are often elves. You know, this story is starting to sound somewhat familiar. Are there white tigers next? There will be no tigers in this story, Duke Ivan. But I can promise you some surprises. Okay, no white tigers apparently. But we have a mount now. The unicorn is ours. We own it. It is our possession. Oh, Alright, we're, we're joined with it, sort of. Not in a creepy way. But we have joined with the unicorn. And we are... Oh, what do we have in our inventory here? We have some pirates, apparently. Those are our creatures. Sea elf pirates, and it looks like we have 12 of them. They don't seem super powerful, and we also have a greater earth elemental as their siege warfare unit. 
So as it stands, it looks like we could probably fight some of these, but I think we will end up losing quite a bit if we do. So I'm going to lean toward not fighting right away. And, ooh, that will join us. There we go. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go for it. Next, Wisloth came across a herd of twilight stags moving silently through the forest. Wisloth decided to follow the stags as they seemed to beckon him along. I guess we go stag following. All right, well, we definitely don't want to fight that. That looks very, very, very dangerous to us. So we will follow after the stags. We'll end the turn and follow on. And it looks like the stags are leading us further and further along the way. So I guess we'll continue to follow. It seems to be their game, if you will. Alright, the army offers to join the hero for free. Yes. Alright, we now have a stag. What is that down there? The stags led Wisloth and his mount to a small clearing. Pixies and spirits were dancing around a standing stone, half covered in moss and plants. Though he was a sea elf, Wisloth knew enough about the customs of the elves living on land to recognize a dragon line stone, marking an underground river of dragon blood, the source of all magic. If there were other elves nearby, then he might well find them at the convergence of the dragon lines, where the power would be strongest. Okay, well there you go. So apparently there are pools of dragon blood, or rivers of dragon's blood, underneath the ground. That doesn't sound disturbing, creepy, or, well, inhumane at all. I mean, why are there rivers of blood, you know, why are there rivers filled with the blood of dragons underneath? Like, how many dragons are there that you have to make a river full of its blood? And what happened to the dragons? Did they all die? Why are there rivers of, of blood underneath the ground? It doesn't make sense. But it's okay. It's the source of all magic, and I guess that's just fine. Right, we need to follow the standing stones now. And I guess, yes, these will join us. We'll be getting us some uh, magic pixies to join us. It's okay. Alright, so we must follow the stones. And it looks like there's some gold to be had up here. And we all know that gold is a very, very good thing. We shall head up and snag that up. Then I suppose... We'll come over this way. And that looks like a fight we can definitely not win. Despite how much I would love to grab that stuff up, it does not appear that that's a thing we can do. So we're going to continue to move on over this way. We'll end our turn. Looks like there's some more gold over there that I missed, but we'll come back to it. Let's follow the stones. They definitely seem to want to lead us down this path. And apparently uh, Dana is over there. Or uh, Danan. 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 Dananan. I don't, I don't know, guys. But she's over there, and we must go talk to them. Uh, threat is none. We'll talk with us. They are Sylvan castaways. All right. Traveling from stone to stone, Wisloth eventually reached a stone circle. This was what Wisloth had been looking for. A nexus of the dragon lines. As he approached the monument, Wisloth noticed a figure sitting next to the largest stone, meditating. The woman dressed in the robes of a druid, was probably not older than him, despite her silvery hair. She observed Wisloth as he dismounted, piercing him with her amber eyes. There was a pride and defiance in her gaze, but Wisloth also sensed something else. A deep, familiar loneliness. Okay. Well, let's go talk to the lonely woman. You are not of my people. My name is Wisloth. I was on a ship. I fell overboard during a storm, and I followed the dragon lines here. You are a Sheldon. We haven't seen your kind this far north for many, many moons. I don't want to burden you with my plight. Is there a port nearby? I've been walking for days. I believe Felista did most of the walking. Felista? The unicorn? If she likes you, I shall trust you. Follow me to my camp, Sheldon. Thank you, my lady. Can you tell me where we are? Is this Irulan? This is the Twilight Archipelago. You are farther from home than you imagine. Oh no, we're far from home, lost, and we're being taken in by strangers. 
Which is cool. Aw, we can't steal their... Aw, I wanted to steal her units. That's kind of sad. Alright, I guess we end our turn. Let's see what our quest updates are. Follow Adanan, Adanan to the Sylvan Outpost. We'll see how to say that soon enough, I suppose. Alright, we're going to end the turn, and it's off to the Sylvan Outpost we go, apparently. We'll stop and grab some Shadow Steel or something along the way, I guess. And what is it that we're grabbing? It was Star Silver, apparently. So, we'll grab some Star Silver along the way, I guess. And that is the play. Alright, we're going to end our turn once again. It's going to be a new week. And wow, we made it all the way to her little base camp pretty quick. Week of the Shadow Council. A week when mysterious beings shape the future of Ashan. Now, what this is in reference to, I haven't actually joined the Shadow Council, nor do I know everything about it. But apparently, the developers had this forum or thing that you could join, right? And it was a group of people that were trying to shape how HOM 7 or Might Magic Hero 7 actually was. And that's how they kind of decided what the best of all the Homs were, and they try to implement it into this game. That's why you see the return of the caravans and things of that nature. The Sylvan and the Academy classes were brought back that weren't, I guess, in the last uh, game. So, yeah, that's all from the Shadow Council, which was a group of, I guess, just Hom fans that got to join in on figuring out how to develop this game. So pretty cool stuff and I even made reference to it there and I think you can even join it if you go to the website though I'm not 100% certain on that one I could be slightly off we'll see all right I'm gonna actually go and tag up the stables right now or in the next turn we couldn't finish what we need needed to do anyway so we'll go here maybe we could have made it I don't know maybe I was being silly Lady Danon, yeah we might have who is this Danon. stranger everything's fine Cyril. Felista has found another castaway. This one seems to be a Sheldon. Whistler, at your service. A sea elf, eh? Maybe Solana put you on our path to get us out of our predicament. A shipwrecked sailor doesn't inspire much confidence. Anyone can be thrown to the sea in a storm. What is your predicament? We are castaways, Sheldon. Just like you. We were on our way to Dragon Mist Island. When our ship was caught in a maelstrom and crashed on the reefs north of here. We built new ships, but they were sunk. A tribe of Cyclops controls what comes and goes from the island, from the top of their cliffs. Cyclops? They can be tricky. Are there not enough of you to oust them from their perch? Short of climbing the cliff, which would be suicide, the only way to reach them would be for a few brave souls to sail through the maelstrom again and moor on the other side of the island. I don't know if Providence or the Dragons truly put me on this island, but neither Cyclops nor a Maelstrom are going to keep me here. Alright, bold words spoken, sir. Bold words are spoken. Alright, so there is the Cyclops uh, little dealie. There's the Maelstrom and the other Maelstrom. And those are our current goals. Alright, we got a thousand experience for that, so we leveled up off of doing literally nothing. Yay for victory! Alright, what else do we have here? We have, yeah, you can't die. We know. We can't use, We can't lose a Danon either. And we have to build a ship fit to go through the Maelstrom. And we need to have enough stuff. And we need to actually gather enough resources. We need to have enough troops and enough resources. So we need 16 wood, 6,500 gold, and 8 ore. Well, I'm not quite ready to do that yet. But we're getting there. We're going to get there eventually, guys. Alright, we have an entire island to explore, and I don't believe we're on a timer for this, so we can go as slow or as quickly as we want. And there's really no pressure, which is nice. So we're going to do our, well, my typical strategy of death balling, and we're going to steal your troops, my lady. Hopefully you can accept that and move on, because it's going to happen one way or another. Alright, additionally we have a we have a druid and we have a hunter. Alright, I believe the Pixies and the Oak Dryads are the medium tier units, or the, the early tier units. And we now have a town available to us as well, which is nice. Let's take a peek at our skills first before we do the town thing. We have one point in Nature's Revenge and one point in Exploration, and that is what we have. Sea Warfare. All Hunters, Druids, Blade Dancers, and their upgrades controlled by the hero gain the Sea Warfare ability. Which I don't know what that means, but apparently we've done that. 
I think I'm probably going to lean toward going down the exploration tree first, and then we'll continue from there. Let's see what she's got available. She's got Earth Magic and Nature's Revenge. And reduces mana cost, stone skin, defense. Alright, what do we have here? Oh, really? A Sylvan Ballista gets a second attack after attacking a marked creature. Interesting. Alright, so what I think I'm going to do... Like, Snatch is a pretty good skill. But I feel... I think I'm going to go with Native Terrain. I think I'm actually going to do that. That way, when we make him the governor, it's actually going to be useful to us. So I'm going to go that route. Let's see what Nature's Revenge actually does for us. Enemies' creatures get up to one mark after being the target of a friendly unit's attack or ability. Creatures attacking a marked creature benefit from plus four attack for every mark on the target. The mark lasts until the end of the combat round. Uh, enemy creatures can get up to two marks and eventually up to three. And then the hero's attack additionally marks the creature, which is a pretty good skill. Uh, enemy creatures that are marked get minus one movement and the Sylvan Ballista. And the final uh, deal here is friendly creatures attacking the enemy creature with three marks always make critical hits. So if you're focused firing down a large creature, you can or a really huge stack, that's actually be really good. So pretty cool stuff. So we also have a little bit into the offensive, a little bit into the warfare. We have a defensive max, which we've seen before, and leadership max, which we've also seen before. So I think we're probably going to go down the exploration until we max out with whatever. Um, then I might go down Nature's Revenge or Leadership next, and then Nature's Revenge. And then finally we'll finish off with the defense, and probably then some offense, if we go that long. And then for our gal pal here, I think we'll probably go for the, uh, oh wow. Plus 15% health for friendly creatures sounds pretty epic. We'll probably go down the Earth Tree, the Earth Skill Magic thingy first. I think that's going to be our first thing. We'll max that out. Then we'll probably go down Paragon as well. And then from that, we'll probably snag up like Novice Rank and Prime and Air and Water. And then we'll be able to benefit from having all those at actual Master Rank already, which is going to be pretty epic. And then who knows what else we'll do from there, guys. I'm, I'm not sure. But, yep, definitely Air Magic and Paragon seem to be the way to go. Definitely seem to be the way to go. Alrighty, so we've figured that out. Let's get into our town now, take a peek around. We can create a building to start getting some dryads, which are not the greatest units in the world, but it's okay. And unfortunately, it's the only thing we can build right now, so we're going to start off building that. We're going to recruit them. And we'll take a peek at what the dryads do here in a minute. We're also very broke, so we didn't even get to recruit very many of them. Alright, the Dryads are just pretty much basic units. I mean, they have this. Treant Synergy. The creature and neighboring friendly creatures have a plus 5 defense. The creature heals neighboring friendly Treants at the end of its turn for 1 health. Meh. It's okay. I mean, they're not, they're not great. They're not terrible. They're just kind of, you know, they exist. It's fine. So we're going to have her gather up stuff. He's going to do the fighting for now. I, oops, I assume eventually he's going to max out at fighting. And then we'll be able to fight with with her instead of him, and then maybe we get both of them maxed. I don't know. I am not a psychic. Maybe a semi-psychic, but definitely not a full-blown psychic psychic. Alright, it looks like there is an ore pit to be had here. We'll tag that up, and there looks to be some stuff over here. I guess we can cross the, the bridge there and fight that out. Alright, we're going to end the turn, we're going to go across the bridge and fight with the wonderful, wonderful wolf here, and we'll try the quick combat and see what it does. You know what, we, even though we're losing very little there, we want to actually see some combat this time, guys, so even if we have trivial battles, let's fight some of it just to see what the Sylvan is all about. How about that? How about that? I think that's going to be a pretty fun little dealie here. Alright, we have two ranged units here at the start, which is going to be pretty nice. The druids and the rangers, and then we have a somewhat tanky individual on that, and then everybody else. So, this should go fairly decently. Let's see what kind of spells we have available. Absolutely none. I am okay with this. And we are going to blast, I guess, the five here. 
And we can wait again, and it's no longer detrimental to us. Yay, for no detriment. Alright, the wolves are going to come forward. And sadly, or sillily, sillily, is that, I don't think that's a word. But if it were, it would be an interesting word, to say the least. Alright, we're going to try to take you out of the mix a little bit. Didn't do a tremendous amount of damage, but with a high morale there, to go a little bit more damage-oriented, I don't think you're going to do anything. Just going to flat back you up. We're going to go and throw out some damage on you. And then we should theoretically be able to kill off some of you. Okay, do we get enough high morale to move again? Nope. Our fairies... Alright, now here's the thing to remember about dryads versus fairies. Alright. So the dryads, they have 5 attack and 20 defense right now. Now, this is in the army right now. They're not normally that ridiculously powerful, right? So 5 attack, 20 defense. I think normally they have like 1 in 6 or something along those lines. I think that's roughly how it works. Or maybe they're two and two to start with. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it says base is two, and then the hero adds three. Okay, so they're two and two. So they have two attack, two defense. If you take a look at the fairies, they start with a base attack of five, but they only have one defense. So that's the difference. Why is why is the dryad so much more defensive? I don't. Oh, because I'm dumb and I forgot I added. Okay, so they they normally would only have five defense. Okay. So these guys are way more aggressive, the other ones are way more defensive. I forgot, we actually put them on defense, and we increased their defense by a significant amount, so... It all makes sense. Alright, we come down here, we're gonna murder them. 25 of them down, and... Well, 25 of them attacking, which brought some of them down. We're gonna attack again. The retaliatory strike isn't gonna be able to do too much. We're gonna come up on this side now and attack again. Another, eh attack and we can probably just kill you between this and the follow-up attack yep there it is no deaths very nice and simple and easy and we are starting at the very bottom we are what level one or two now because we got the free level coming to do the follow me quest so I'll accept it pretty good stuff all right um I don't know if I want to swoop around back that way yet I think we're gonna come up Oh, I guess we can take a peek. Like, I, I vaguely remember something bad being over here that we might not be able to fight yet. We'll see. Alright, we're going to snag that up. We're going to go and tag up the stables. And then I guess we can come over here and tag up this stuff as well. And put ourselves in a fairly favorable position when it comes to getting things handled. Um... Well, this is kind of awkward. Um, what do we need for this? We need a thousand gold. We don't have it. Well, I'm not building the additional dryads or oak dryads building, so unfortunately the week is going to have to go by the wayside there. We're going to snag up this. We're going to come over here and grab that. And I guess come up here and start stealing some more stuff. Okay, meanwhile, we're going to go take a peek real quick. Oh, apparently there is nothing bad over here. Alright, so we'll snag up this. It's if we went all the way around. That's where it's at. Originally, I was going to have her snag all this stuff, but she's so far away. I don't know if sending her over here is ever going to be worth it at this point. So we'll continue moving, maneuvering our folks around and moving them to where they need to be. Gathering up stuff, fighting battles, and doing whatever it is that we do as giant elven awesome people. So... We're going to snag up uh, not this building yet. We'll be able to get that soon. We're going to take this one instead. Alright, let's end our turn. And continue our little journey here. Tag that. We'll come over here and grab some more gold. And eventually we'll be able to grab that. We'll go back to the town. We will finally build this thing up. Build! And we are happy with that. We're going to come over here, grab up some of the Dragon Steel. We're going to move down the line here, snag this. Come up here, grab the defense, and... I don't know, we're just going to start moving around, guys. I'm going to try to get a little bit quicker at doing things like this. I know I tend to overthink, talk, and explain what I'm going to be doing at times. Not always, but I'd say probably more than you would like. 
So I'm going to try not to do that too, too much. And we're going to try to grab some additional troops from the town. And then meet up with our main hero here. Our hero, as it were. And then we'll eventually we're going to probably go around and murder him at that spot. Some of these fights are still pretty scary. Okay, we're out of movement. We need to build a building in the town. I think we're going to go about three more uh, turns and then we'll break it off, folks. Alright, we can't do that. We need to build the blacksmith. Okay. And we're going to end our turn. And then we're going to hop back into Shalwen. And we are going to build this. And it is going to be pretty darn cool. And it's about to be a new week, so we're going to come here and... Recruit all the creatures, which we were actually able to do, which is shocking, by the way. And we're going to head on over to this. And we have the stables applied already, but we're about to apply more of Estables to us. And that's a probably rough fight, so what we're going to do is run up here. And then we're going to probably swing all the way around to get our extra troops. And when we do that, we should be able to get the stables again as well. We'll see. We shall see. Okay, I think we're good. Alright, we're going to end the turn once again. Week of the Toad. A week when fair maidens kiss frogs in hope, in hope of being married within the year. I was going to say in hopes, and then I'm like, there's no S, and then I just stopped. It's okay. Ursh, okay. Reading is tough, guys. It really is. It's the most challenging thing you'll ever, ever have to do in your entire life. No, that's not true. But it can be it can be difficult at times. All right, we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna go over here and grab this. Eventually, there we go. And we did what we always do. We left all the stuff in the town, and I'm sure you guys were laughing at me hysterically, as you often do. It's okay. We totally meant for this to happen. This was the plan all along. And yeah, that's a thing apparently. Oh, we can build a stables there. That seems a little silly. Alright, what if... What do we need? We need dragon steel for that. What do we need for this? More cash. Oh, we actually don't have that much money, do we? Alright, well, I'm thinking maybe we don't build one of these buildings. Alright, well, we'll build this building. How's that? That's one of the cheaper ones. So we can get more pixies. Yay! Alright, so we're gonna... Only be able to recruit a few of those, huh? Alright, we'll recruit four more of those, and we'll try to recruit a few more of these. And then that's going to do it. We're going to leave them actually in there as well. I'm going to run over there and snag that up. And Wisloth is going to grab this, run on into town, and yeah, be looking pretty good. And the turn, run into town as stated. Okay, next up. We could do that, or we can start building mage guilds, I guess. Alright, we'll throw those guys there, these guys here, you guys there. And I would say that we can probably hire a few more of these. And maybe... nope, that's it. Okay. Every magic guild level will provide at least one spell of the selected school. Alright, I think I would like to... I guess we're always going to learn Earth Magic, no matter what, so... Maybe we go down the Prime Tree? I mean, I don't remember what, um... She had multiple schools that she could learn. I want to go down the Light Tree, because I want to get the heals and whatnot. We're going to go down the Prime Tree, just because. Alright, so Solana's Bounty will allow us to get more production out of the Sawmill or Ore Pit. Uh, increase the luck of a target friendly creature. Okay. Decreases the attack of the target creature. So that's like weakness. Oh, it is weakness. Awkward. Uh, sunbeam. Meh. And firebolt. Eh, you know. They're, they're spells, I guess. It's not horrible. Okay. At this point, we're going to come up here and snag the battle here. And then we're going to move up, tag that. Or maybe we'll fight the other group over there. Let's start combat. We'll fight this battle. And probably do our next turn. And then that's where we're going to bring it off. So, stuff, guys. Stuff. 
Alright, where are our druids and why are they not in combat? It seems a bit weird. Alright, the giant rock individual is going to get attacked very minorly. It's not going to be very impressive, I'm not going to lie. I could exaggerate and be like, it's going to be the most powerful attack ever! And it's, it's really not. It's not that at all, not even sort of close to that. Okay, we can, however, throw out some Druid Blastitude. Bloop. And I guess we can move our Dryads a little bit closer. And finally, our Rangers are going to be like, I can't do any damage either because I'm weak. From people at a distance. You would think, as a Ranger, that they wouldn't have that problem, but apparently that's not the case. Hopefully we can survive whatever they're going to do to us. 58 damage is pretty intense, but we have our 50... Pixies or fairies or whatever they are attacking, which actually did way less damage than I thought it would. Okay, we're gonna attack with our pirates. Arr, die! And we do a double swing with the pirates, which is pretty cool. Apparently, he had some gum or something on the bottom of his foot. He decided to scrape it off. It's okay, I guess. The full flanking from the dryad is gonna do a little bit of damage there, but I don't see us killing this thing off in one shot here. I had my hopes, and we did decent damage, but I feel like... Oh, he's gonna focus! Oh, he focused on the wrong target. So the AI definitely didn't make a good choice on that front. How weak are you? 47. I don't want to risk you actually going in. So... we're gonna wait, and this is probably gonna be a horrible mistake. Just so you guys know. Gonna wait again, we're gonna attack with you, and it looks like maybe we have high luck. Oh, we did a whole six damage. That is pretty darn impressive, let me tell you. Well, like I say, guys, I don't really care for my oak dudes or my dryads so much. So yeah, they're gonna be the sacrificial lambs. The lammy lambs, if you will. Eh, 21 damage. Maybe we do it? 12. Oh, we had the invert. And it looks like our pirates are going to get at least one of them killed off. So we're lacking a little on the damage side of things. But as we level up, hopefully that will be remedied. We lost three units. Not that big of a deal. All right, what did we get? What did we get? Uh, all right, well, I guess we're going to go this way. And I didn't make you the governor because I'm stupid and I forget to do things. I know, it's shocking. Shocking. All right, we're going to snag up this and this. And this, and we are actually going to go back and make him the governor because it's going to increase our movement in our town's area of control, which is pretty much where we're going to be for a little while, not the entire time, but a little bit of time. A thousand gold seems pretty legit to me, we'll take it. And we are out of movement. And we are going to come back here and build a structure. Alright, we can build the Blade Dance Terrace now, if we were so inclined, or we could build the next level of the Magic Guild, which we actually can't build, so not that at all. Alright, looks like we can build either a Mystic Pond, or Solana's Infinite Gift, where we get one wood and one ore per day, or we can get one Dragon, dragon Blood Crystal, Dragon Steel, Shadow Steel, or Star Silver at random per day. Both have their uses, both have their merits. Uh, Blade Dancer's Terrace. I'm leaning toward really wanting to get my druid thing going on here. So, that being said, what we're probably going to end up doing is maybe just upgrading our gals here. And then we'll actually have non retaliatory fairies in the next bit. So, onward we go. And it shall be here that we shall install you as the governor. Yep. Yay for extra movement. Yay for upgraded units. And yay for maybe buying stuff. Just going to recruit two more of you. It's totally fine. And the 13 of you. And eventually, eventually we'll increase the dryads down the road. But I am in no rush to actually get that done. Alright, do I want to go... I do. I want to come up here and I want to do battle with the Griffin. And we shall. We shall do battle with the Griffin. We shall kill them all off. And then probably move around a little bit with uh, Danon. Or Danon. Or Danon. Danon. 
And then we'll probably break off the episode. So, yeah, that whole thing. Alright, let's see what kind of spells we have. Alright, I saw what kind of spells we have. Not impressed. We're going to go and do one damage to you. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. You guys are going to fly forward. Are all of you going to fly forward? Or is one of you going to sit around the back and just float around and be like, I'm going to stay back here. Because uh. it seems like you guys do that periodically. Not all the time, but occasionally it does happen. Alright, the attack is out. I don't really care. Probably gonna end up having to defend here. Three to seven. Well, if we do three. That's so weak. I can't believe we're only gonna do three. Alright, well, maybe we can get a kill here. Without losing anyone. Alright, we managed to do so. Excellent. And we can kill eight of these guys straight up with our, our little fairy harpy pixie things. What are they now? They are sprites. We can kill eight of them with sprites. And I am no longer concerned for this combat in any way, shape, or form. Let's attack here just because we can. Oh no, they did an entire 11 damage to us. Whatever will we do? Oh no! Yeah, not super impressive. Not super impressive. Alright, the attack is out. The maneuvering is real. The damage is, well, kind of done. And there it is. Victory is ours. We lost no one, I believe. Another pretty decent chunk of experience for us. And some treasure loot to be had, which we're going to leave. We're going to come up this way and maybe fight the Hydra? Fight the Hydra! But we'll probably end up doing that in the next episode, guys. Right now, we're going to snag up all this. That is actually open and free. We will take that as well. More magic, more power, more doing. Home Depot. No, I'm kidding, guys. Come on, you remember those commercials. They're probably still active. I don't know, guys. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you had fun. It is the start of the Sylvan campaign. We are on hard mode, and that's not, like, impossible, but it's on hard mode. We'll see how we progress through the campaign and see if I made a terrible mistake or if it's all going to be okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will be back tomorrow with a little bit more Might and Magic Hero 7. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. Yeah.